welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel, I'm a third year biomedical science student, and today I'm gonna be sharing my MCAT summer studying schedule that got me a 95 percentile score without burning out. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. In the first video of my MCAT prep series, I mentioned splitting my MCAT prep into monthly highlights. Now for me, what this looked like was a four month study schedule. So I split my highlights down in the following ways. In the first month, I focused on content review. The second month, I focused on practice questions. The third month, I started AMC materials as well as third-party practice tests. And in the fourth month, I focused on AMC practice exams as well as strengthening weaknesses or any loose ends that I need to tie up before the exam. In my first month, I focused on content review. Now it's important to note that the MCAT is passage-based, so you wanna make sure to caution yourself against spending too much time on content review. You also wanna make sure that you spend enough time reviewing the content so you have a strong knowledge foundation to build off of. The first thing I did was take a diagnostic so I knew just exactly how the exam was formatted. I could adapt my content review with the format of the exam in mind. For my content review, I chose to go with Kaplan Review Books. These are super concise resources for condensing all of the material that you need to know for MCAT prep, as well as prioritizing high yield concepts over lower yield concepts. The thing I found useful was making summary sheets for each chapter in the Kaplan Review Books. I used these summary sheets to make really nice and concise wall notes that I stuck around my room just to give me a very broad picture and reminder of all the content I was studying. It's important to not spend too much time on note taking as personally I didn't use the notes as much as I would have liked to and it's more beneficial to go into active learning methods instead of passive learning methods like note taking. For me these wall notes and summary sheets served more as a nice broader overall picture and visual reminder of the content that I had covered more so than a super effective studying strategy. If you haven't heard of Anki it's a really useful tool for drilling in a lot of the content questions as well as high yield details that may come up during your MCAT studying prep. I would definitely not spend too much time making your own Anki cards because for me I tried to do this with my wall notes and ended up not even using any of my Anki cards and wasting all that time creating cards. <coughs> there are already some pre-made Anki decks out there that are super popular and helpful, as well as based off of the Kaplan review books. I highly recommend using those instead of creating your own cards. During the content review phase, you may find it helpful to weave in some practice questions just so you can get in the habit of how the AMC formats and asks their questions. Use Anki for reinforcement, but make sure don't spend too much time on content review because the practice questions are where it's at. The second month of my MCAT prep involved practice questions. I got my practice questions from a variety of question banks and I'll be making a video to go more in depth into the MCAT resources and question banks I used. UWorld, next to the AMC official materials, is one of the most representative resources out there. With UWorld, I would definitely recommend starting early, but not too early, as you don't want to run out of questions too early in your <coughs> MCAT prep. You may want to start off with Jack Weston question banks, which are a free resource and their questions are pretty representative of the content. And remember, don't spend too much time on content review because it's ultimately going to come down to those practice questions and practice exams. Make sure to add a little bit of variety in what question banks you're using and try to avoid overusing one question bank too much as this can cause you to get too used to how one company asks their questions. Additionally, make sure you're doing one to two cars passages daily to practice for the car section. For me, I did about 20 questions from each section a day, but this number will look different for everyone. I found it useful to do a little from each section a day instead of completely from one section to provide some variety and lightly stimulate test conditions. Make sure that you're properly pacing yourself and not beating yourself up if you can't get all the questions done in a day. During my second month, I also continued reviewing any content that I didn't completely master in the first month, as well as reviewing content that I found I was missing a lot in practice questions. In my third month, I started doing AMC practice materials in addition to third-party exams, such as Princeton and Kaplan. The AMC prep material included question packs, a CARS diagnostic, and different test banks. I wanted to make sure to give myself adequate time to work through these materials as it's coming from the test maker themselves. I want to make sure you're prioritizing the AMC materials above any other materials. In the fourth and final month before my MCAT exam, I focused on the AMC materials. Now this included completing all of the practice exams and making sure that I spent an entire day after completing the exam to review what exactly I missed, why I missed it, as well as what I got right and why I got it right. It's so important to familiarize yourself with the AMC material, especially the AMC practice exams, since it's coming straight from the people who are making that exam. In the last week before my MCAT exam, I made sure to give myself adequate time for rest, relaxation, 
and time for my mind to consolidate the exam materials as well as important test taking strategies. It's so important to make sure that you're putting yourself in the proper test taking mindset before going into that MCAT exam. Use this time to work out any of the test date intricacies, such as making sure you know where exactly your test taking center is, what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, and all of the little test taking details that go into the day of the exam. And that wraps it up and all the information from my MCAT studying schedule. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe down below, and comment any questions you may have about my MCAT studying experience, or if you have any tips for MCAT prep. Stay tuned for more videos in the series, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!